There are only so many words you can come up with and use to describe what our ears are hearing in the room. And uh, I'll try to describe some of these words and what they mean for anyone who may not know or wants to hear what my definition of, of, of these words mean. So st soundstage is the first one. Uh, uh, a good audio system should project a very good soundstage. What does that mean? So if you're listening to a live performance, for example, at a concert, say you're listening to a small scale bluegrass a combo, a banjo, a guitar, right? A singer on stage. Uh, if, if you're if they're on a proper stage, you will hear a wide sound, like the room will fill the space, but there will be boundaries to that sound, but it should en envelop you around, right? You should hear that music coming at you. In a good audio system, the sound stage will pe be projected in a way, not where it's just aimed at your head and you just hear this sound coming at you all flat. A, a good stereo system, a good high-end audio system, will project a sound stage that sounds as if it's coming way farther out than the boundaries of the speakers, higher than the speakers. You should hear depth. You should hear instruments behind your speakers and maybe vocals in front of your speakers. Now this is mixing in with imaging, but imaging and sound stage kind of go together like peanut butter and jelly because within that sound stage, within that big open space of sound in your room that your projectors projectors that your speakers are projecting out to you there will be in a good audio system uh, you will have good imaging and what that means is you will actually be able to hear that the banjo player right he's maybe sitting right here between the two speakers but a little bit off from that speaker you'll hear the singer dead center almost as if that singer is being projected out into the room. You might hear the acoustic guitar far on the right, maybe a little bit behind the speaker. You might hear a drummer behind the speaker dead center, or if that drummer, if it was recorded and the drummer was off to the right a little bit, you should be able to hear that as well. In a well set up audio system, you can close your eyes and it's as if those performers are in your room. The better um, revealing the most more revealing systems, the ones that do the imaging and sound stage that are world class, you'll be able to close your eyes and see where that guitar player is, see where that drummer is, right? Because you'll hear them in the correct space within the sound stage. I was listening to a song the other day, and the beautiful female vocals were about a foot out in front of the speakers, dead center, and it's almost as if that voice was floating right in the room but I heard the acoustic guitar that she was playing. And the acoustic guitar was actually, it sounded like it was down by her knee. I actually heard the guitar lower than her voice. And that is what a good system can do with imaging. It, it, you can see the image of their performers within that sound stage. So you have that wide sound stage. The deeper it is, the more you'll be able to hear instruments behind the speakers. The taller it is, you'll hear those instruments swell up to the heights of your ceiling. And in some systems, the sound stage can extend all the way to the walls uh, as far as width goes. So sound stage and imaging are basically traits that bring some of that magic from an audio system into your room. If you hear the word holographic sound stage, now that means exactly what you think it does. It means it's so real you can see those performers in their places in your room if you close your eyes even if your eyes are open i used to tell my friend i wish we had a um, holographic projector where we can project the artist in the room and in a good audio system you would actually feel like they're performing for you if there were holographic images of these performers and instruments in the space so holographic imaging is just top tier imaging, holographic soundstage, same thing, they all go together. So what does it mean when a reviewer talks about a speaker and they say, ooh, there was a lot of air? Now that sounds like, okay, what does that mean in an audio scenario? To me, what air means is that top end, the treble energy, sometimes with speakers, the treble energy is rolled off or subdued, which can bring a darker, 
or a tad boring sound at times because it's that treble energy that truly provides that extension and that life and the energy. And if that's too rolled off or too tamed, the system will sound very warm and more direct, fatter, right? Because you're hearing more of the mid bass and the bass. Uh, a treble that is extended, now there can be treble that's overextended and that's when it starts to sound harsh or hard or brittle. We don't want that either. But in a good system where that treble extension is just right, it can sound very sweet. And say you're hearing, um, you know, drumsticks tapping a cymbal, sh that shimmer of the cymbal. Uh, in a system with good air, you will hear that, that shimmer almost as if it's coming off of your speaker and floating into the room. And, and I'll just say it like it's combining with the air and it becomes part of the room. Uh, it goes along with the three dimensionality, the holographic sound stage, all of that. But uh, air is more about the top end and that crystalline sound, that shimmer that's, that's never bright or harsh, but it's not rolled off where, where it's flat and boring. It brings life and some three dimensionality. It almost becomes one with the air in the room, right? That's how I see air or, or, or airy vocals even. If a vocal is imaging correctly and it's separated from all the instruments and you hear the performer a little bit in front of your speakers, their vocals can be so real that um, it almost sounds like they're there in the space with you. Very airy, a very light treble. It's not overcooked or overdone and it's never dull or boring. So let's move on to liquid. What does liquid mean? I use that term because there are some pieces that when I put them in my system, any trace of what we used to hear in digital reproduction, for example, that grayness, that uh, harshness, that grittiness, that little bit of distortion and and flatness that used to be so prevalent, especially in the 1980s and early 1990s. Um, but these days, if you have a good system that's uh, a top tier digital um, solution, which many DACs today, even in the $2,000 range, $1,500 range, can do this because DAC uh, technology has come such a long, long way just over the last five or six years. But liquid for me means when the sound is just effortless and it just kind of pours out of your speaker. Imagine turning on a tap uh, in your kitchen sink and you have the water just flowing freely, right? It's just coming out without any effort. There's no digital hash or noise or graininess. It's just liquid. It's pouring out and assaulting your senses in a good way, right? So liquid means there's no compression. There's nothing that's being constrained. Uh, some amplifiers, if you turn them up, they can make your speakers start to sound compressed and hard. Um, that is not a liquid sounding amp. Uh, a good amp that you can turn up and the music just gets bigger and fuller and better and comes out with ease. That's what I mean by liquid. It's just effortless. So many good integrated amplifiers and amplifiers and um, they can portray that liquidity, that, that effortless ease of music coming into your room from your speakers. So sometimes you hear the word body, warmth, meat, meat on the bones. Now there's an opposite to that. There's lean, brittle, and hard. Uh, in my 35 years of hi-fi, I once had a system that was lean, brittle, and hard, and there was no mid-bass. The, the mid-range was just thin and flat and too clean. The bass was very, very limited and it excelled and seemed like to be focused on the top end. And it was a horrible, horrible listen. And I remember those speakers at the time, I bought them used for $6,500. I'm not going to state the name of the speakers, but they were beautiful to look at. But the sound coming out of them um, with a Mark Levinson uh, integrated amp at the time was hard, brittle, bright, gray. I hated it. I so regretted that system. And that's what I would call lean, thin, hard. It's not involving, it's not emotional. It doesn't connect to your heart and soul. Now, on the other hand, if you have a system that portrays some body, uh, I, I talk about body as in the sound is thicker, right? You have a fuller mid band where the vocals lie, where some drum beats lie, right? Where some guitar strums lie, uh, a big, 
warm, meaty sound. And that, that connects with my heart and soul more. It connects with the, me emotionally. And that doesn't mean it's a warm, rolled off, dull system. You can have that big, meaty sound with a nice, sweet, golden-hued top end and a nice, round bottom end. And it can sound really, really good. But sometimes it can be too much of a good thing because you'll get a bass that's a little sloppy or boomy. And uh, if there's too much mid bass and bass presence, that can obscure details. But when I use the, the words meaty, it means there's meat on the bones. The instruments are thick. The voices are thick. Uh, they're not thin and hard and gray, right? So I much prefer body, meat, and warmth to thin, gray, hard, and lean. Uh, some people like to go lean to hear uber details, but then you're only listening to details. And it can just get um, exhausting after a while. You hear a lot of people talk about, I don't even get fatigue when I listen for two hours, right? Now, I would never have a system that fatigued me after listening for two hours because it starts to give you a headache. It hurts your ears. And that, for me, usually means it's a leaner thinner system and it's just too much of a good thing. Uh, with my system here, the Fleetwood DeVilles, they can never be um, fatiguing at all. And I am sure to pick components in my system that I can listen to for eight hours. And I have done that before if I choose to do that uh, without any listening fatigue whatsoever. I can listen for hours and never have a headache or my ears hurt or, or I'm just not feeling right here. It, it always is pleasant offering detail and air and all of that at the same time. I'm not a fan of thin, lean, bright systems, but some people like that. Um, and, and there are some systems that are, are leaner and thinner, but they still have some body, um, which can be pleasant, but I still find those fatigue me after a while. So I always go with the body warmth and meat on the bones. When reading reviews or watching YouTube videos, you also hear the term transparent a lot. Now, that means exactly what you think it means. When you have a system that's portraying and presenting a big, wide, fluid sound stage where instruments just hang in the air and they're in the correct place, there's also a level of transparency that can come with that. You can have lower transparency. The higher up the transparency ladder we go, the more clear. It's almost like if you're looking out of a window and you're looking at a tree, but your window's a little dirty. Uh, to make it more transparent, you're gonna put some Windex and you're gonna wipe it and you're gonna see that tree very clearly. Same thing with audio. The more transparent the system, the less haze. Uh, you hear people say, it's like I put a towel or removed a towel from my speaker. It just opened up so much. Um, transparent is more clarity. When you close your eyes, you can see and hear every instrument and they're so clear and detailed, but that's only good when it's done with a little bit of body and warmth, in my opinion, and some systems can do that. But when you have a transparent system, it can be actually incredible because that's when things get eerie and spooky, right? Uh, when you can have a performance and a vocalist sound like they're two feet in front of you with a big breathy, you can hear the details in the throat the lips smacking when they sing. You can hear the tongue moving. That's when you have a really transparent system. You can hear all of those details within that sound stage. When you have a system that does all of those things, that is where the magic comes in. And I say, this is a magical amplifier because it does all of those things so well. One of those amps was the Pass Labs Integrated 25. Nothing offensive about it at all, but there was nothing boring about it at all. It had just the right levels of that top end sweetness, right? Of the body, of the warmth, the sound stage. Fantastic integrated. That's why in that review I said this is magic because it does all of those things. I'm listening to an app now, the Kinky Studios EXM1. 2400 US dollars, built like a tank, 60 pounds. Beautiful, beautiful beautiful integrated amp in looks and sound. Um, I would call that amp transparent, powerful, three-dimensional. Um, it has body, but it doesn't really have a, a lot of warmth, but it still sounds so good because it's dynamic as all get out. Dynamic, there's another word. 
dynamics in a system can be very important because if you have low dynamics, there's low excitement. Think of dynamics as, you know, you're listening, imagine you're listening to a song, some drum beats, boom, 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 and they get quieter and quieter and quieter, right? And all of a sudden you hear boom, a big explosive drum that's meant to just assault your senses in your listening seat. In a system with low dynamics, that big boom will sound subdued or rounded or dull. In a highly dynamic system, it will sound like a lightning strike just hit your room and it might, you know, if I had any hair, it might stick it up on end. Um, high dynamics can be really, really exciting. An amp like the EXM1 from Kinky Studios has very high dynamic drive. That transition from <clears throat> soft to, to loud, that transition from dark to light, it's more striking with a high dynamic system. I love dynamics in my system. There are some amps that don't do dynamics very well, but they specialize in other things. Um, it's always good to have some dynamics in your system because then you can hear the recordings as they were meant to be. There are some recordings that are highly dynamic and can really blow you back in your chair and, and give you those goosebumps. So dynamics, are very important in a well set up sound system as well. So there you go. Those were my definitions of some common used terms uh, in the audiophile community and reviews and forums where people talk about, and that's what they mean to me. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, I will have more videos very, very soon. I love you all and uh, I'll see you next time.